as it is the beginning of the month. Happy March, everybody. We have new additions to our Julia K watercolour collection. I wanted to pick kind of moodier colours for this month, and these three colours take us up to the grand total of 29 in the collection here in the stash shop in the UK. So first of all, we have Newton, and we also have Valdemar which is absolutely gorgeous. And lastly, we have Hedda, which uh, looks a bit kind of nondescript, but it is a really fun colour. Here you can see um, a little swatch out that I've had. Newton comes out to this lovely soft grey colour, and you can see that Valdemar there is a much moodier green, and you can get some nice rich colour with that too. And then we have Hedda, which a little bit more delicate, but if I just tilt this page, you can see that it's got a beautiful and very consistent and uniform shimmer to it as well. So if you would like to grab a hold of any of those colours, you can head over to the stash shop. The link is down in the description. That will take you to the website. And you can pick up any of these three colours or any of other Julia's colours as well. And you can treat yourself to something delicious. everyone and welcome back to the colour cave where we like to play with our stuff and uh, as I promised in the last video we do indeed have an upgrade and today we are going to unbox this monthly German art subscription box. This is box number 54 so upgrade are kind of into the swing of things by now. I have found the upgrade and uh, this opinion seems to be supported by uh, you as you guys as well. Um, upgrade can be a bit hit or miss and sometimes when they try to go with ideas outside the box so to speak sometimes they work really well but other times they, they really just don't so uh, always a, always a curiosity with upgrade let's see what we've got this month the paper is professional quality oil paper there's eight sheets of it it's 230 gsm and it is a5 and this is from smlt art Upcrate have used their papers a couple of times now, so their papers do seem to be very good quality. So we're getting something oil based, so it might be oil, like pastel crayons, it might be water mixable oils, it might be straight oil paint. I doubt it'll be straight oil paint on the basis that um, it's very messy and you need a lot of stuff to, to get done. Here is the featured artist, the wildest peaches. Uh, these look like oil pastels just the texture that's been used there so I'm fairly confident that that's what we've got. Ugh, not exactly my favourite thing. I love this artwork though, it's super cute. And this is Upcrate versus the Live Art Club. Oh, here we go. Artists, Artists of the Month, the Live Art Club, is an all-female collective from Hamburg. Um, and there's three of them. Together have made a mission to spread inspiration and creative spirit. Okay, so that's quite interesting. They do have uh, quite, um, well, it seems to be quite a cohesive art style. When you look at some of these pieces here, um, I don't know whether these particular pieces are all from the one person, but the, the styles seem to fit well together if they do belong to, you know, all three of them. Okay, um, so here's our QR code for our magazine. Um, you do not get anything in terms of a magazine from Upcrate anymore. This is as good as it gets, uh, which, you know, the, we're, we're split on. We do have a lovely little set of stickers here. <laughs> this is, the, the theme is orange, which is lovely. Um, these, are, these are actually quite creative. I quite like them. I especially like the cowboy boot. That's my favourite. I like the fact that we've got orange on the sticker here as well. This is nice. Conte, uh, four colour crayons assorted. So we've got actual crayons. Why is it with crayons just now? Like I don't I don't need wax crayons in my life. Um I have never used Conte wax crayons, I can say that wholeheartedly. They're in this little matchbox though, which is kind of cute. Let's get them out of here. Um primary colours plus green. Contents may vary. Well that's not good. <laughs> oh look, they're so dinky. They don't smell of anything either. Okay, ah, uh, right, interesting. The Van Gogh oil pastels. I don't think we've had these particular ones before, but we've had something similar, have we not? I always just find it really difficult to not make things look like it's been painted or drawn by a five-year-old. Yeah, uh, okay, 12 colors. Van Gogh is the brand for the serious artist for whom quality is important. Oil pastels are characterised by their striking colouring power and remarkable softness, which enables them to release colour easily. With Van Gogh oil pastels, you can start work straight away. Well, I would hope so. 
they're suitable for several grounds like paper, cardboard and wood. Well, we're okay on that front because we've got actual oil paper. So that's kind of cool. It gives direct results, versatile and ideal for both expressive and more detailed work. Complete range consists of 60 colours. That's quite a lot. Colours are available open stock as well as in sets. Yeah, so standard fare really. Um, you've got your primaries um, and you've got a couple of greens, a brown, a black and a white. So... Right, well, we'll take a look at these in a minute. We've got other stuff too. What's this? A Centropen permanent marker. Uh, you, they would have to give us a permanent marker with this. Uh, the, the marker will not work over the top of, of the pastels because it just sits on the top. Um, but if you put this on paper first and then use the pastels, um, th this won't budge. So that's always something. We'll test that out though. We've also got an orange stick as well, which uh, I don't know whether that's just following the orange theme. <laughs> I think it's more to do with the fact that we can etch things out of the, the wax. But nice that it fits all together. Uh, okay, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm really not excited about this. It was kind of, it was a bit like the Boya Crayon situation in uh, the scrawler box, which was not the February box, the January box, I think. Using oil pastels, maybe not so much oil pastel, because I have seen a lot of people do excellent excellent like realism or semi-realism with them but unless you are in that niche or that is your art style it's very difficult for a lot of artists to create something that looks looks credible and doesn't look like it's been drawn or painted by a five-year-old that is the way that i feel about it i'm not saying that's the way that it is but that's how it makes me feel and i do not like using crayons like at all it's just not my thing so i don't really know what i'm gonna do with this <laughs> And we're gonna find out. Uh, let's put this out of the way and we'll take a wee look at the uh, bottle post. Get my QR code out. Let me see. I've got a really flat battery in my phone as well. It probably wasn't the best time to be doing this. Ah. Okay, now again, I'm gonna try and do this so that we minimize the glare, but you can see the screen because I know most of you would rather look yourself than listen to me. Let's just start at the top here. The supplies, the, uh, the oil pastels, um, made with pure pigments, minimal mineral oils and wax binders. Tinting strength is good. And it just tells you what colours. Okay, recommended retail price is €9. Euros. So cheap as chips. Oh, they've got the little colour chart. Uh, this is one of the things I miss about having the physical magazine. I really like the fact that usually the main supply that Upcrate had, they would have the colour chart for the full range on one of the pages. I really, really miss having like a paper copy of that. And this just like doesn't make up for it, but never mind. The Conte crayons, matchbox of four. Four square bright crayons made from a combination of pigments, clay, binder. Uh, crayons are harder than pastels and charcoal, less dusty and easier to control. Yeah, so you maybe use those for finer details. Uh, they can be sharpened to a chisel point with a sanding block. Uh, bold, vibrant colours. Several layers, high opacity, recommended retail price three ninety five. also in euros, so that's like £3.50, oh god, okay. Wooden stylus scratcher, <laughs> this convenient wooden stylus scratcher is ideal for adding texture, sanded, smooth and polished for safety. I don't know, it's still quite jaggy, where's it gone? Um, you could still give yourself a good old poke with that. Um, I think they mean this part so you're not gonna get what we call in Scotland a skelf. Uh, you probably know it as a splinter. Um, I think that's what they mean. There, There's your Scottish word of the day today, skelf. You can talk about someone being a wee skelf as well and that's a very small or very skinny person. If someone's a wee, a wee skelf, they're just a, a wee toty thing. <laughs> And so end with your lesson for today. Additionally, a specially crafted design features a tapered end, making it perfect for precise and controlled scratching and scoring. I'm sure this will come in handy. Uh, recommended retail price, one euro. I think that's probably just like an arbitrary figure. And here is the centre pen, Unleash Your Creativity. And it's just a permanent marker. A powerhouse in precision and durability. <laughs> oh my. Round tip delivers a precise one millimeter line width. Oh, that is quite a nice tip that's on that. It's like a felt tip pen, except permanent. Okay. Precise one millimeter line width, ensuring accuracy in every stroke. Extra light, fast properties as well. This marker stands the test of time. Resisting water abrasion and weathering. Elevate your writing experience with a tool that combines innovation, durability, and exceptional quality. Well, I think that's kind of stretching things a little bit. It's a permanent marker with a nice nib, but I'll tack it. Uh, recommended retail price, also one euro. Again, obviously just an arbitrary figure. And here is the oil painting paper. 
Natural white coarse embossed linen paper, best suitable for oil, acrylic and spray paintings. pH neutral, lignin free, uh, FSC certified and made in Lithuania and the recommended retail price is six euros bagging. Let's just have a wee look at the paper because we didn't actually do that. I was too, very excitable. Yeah, it has that kind of like full linen, like crissy crossy pattern on it. I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about when I say that. I like this paper. I use it for uh, acrylic paint as well. Like that's, I know a lot of the time, like see when we read the descriptions for this stuff, it says, oh, you can use this, I can use this on it. And a lot of the time I don't, but with this type of paper, I do, I use acrylic paint on it. <laughs> So there you go, actually something that I use dual purpose. It feels nice. Um, yeah, it feels good. At 230, it doesn't, it doesn't feel 230. It feels like 190, but it's fine. So let's move on just now. The Live Art Club, and this is, like, is a great picture of three of them there. I'll zoom back in a wee bit so that you can see me a bit better. Okay, uh, yep, this is the first time they've had a creative collective as our Artists of the Month. Um, so they're talking a little bit. I imagine that the uh, the interview portion of this would be a lot more interesting just because there's three of them. So that would be nice to, to read through and look through some of their stuff. Art Out of the Box with Catherine. This is like the tips and tricks section and there's a video there showing what she's doing here as she goes along. She's done a bit of blending. And then here come some leaves and some more fruits. See, that's a really nice use of, like, almost like a painterly use of them. Uh, that, to me, um, is very acceptable. It's very nice. I like it a lot. I cannot produce something that looks like this. <laughs> this was the upcrate battle from the uh, the paints. Again, I just didn't. I'm really not feeling it with the, the prompts just now, and I don't know why. I've just kind of, like, gone off them a little bit. But it's really nice to be able to come in and see what other people have done. Uh, the prompt here was interaction, and, uh, yeah, this is... Some of these are really nice. I got all excited about the gouache because I'm already using the Talons gouache. Okay, <laughs> this little guy stretching out. So the topic for this one is all we need is fruit. That is such a nice topic though. Um, I, like, I actually really like that as a prompt. It's slowly becoming spring. It's slowly becoming more colourful again. We want to see the bright colours of the, the... I think that says meant to say natural world, not nautical. I, I always talk about typos and the lack of grammar in these boxes. This particular instance, that is probably a language barrier thing. Nautical and natural are two words that can be easily mixed up. Obviously, nautical refers to um, things that belong to the sea. This Stuff like this is not a problem for me. It's when people don't... Don't use full stops and there's blatant spelling mistakes. Things like this, absolutely perfectly acceptable. This is a German box. English is not the first language. So I just wanted to point that out because I am very good at pointing out flaws with stuff like this. That to me is not, and it's not unprofessional either. These things happen when you speak different languages. It's a wonder what a wonderful play of colours it gives us. In the grey everyday life, especially in Scotland, it's very grey all the time. We want to give you and Instagram a good time and give you free reign this month. The main thing is healthy smiley face. On with the fruit. The context of the integration of a fruit is completely up to you. Uh, again, like so basically what they're saying there is how you interpret that and what uh, place in your artwork the fruit has is open to interpretation. Okay, so what we do is we create an artwork with the supplies in the box and we post it to Instagram with the tags. And uh, you have a chance to win the big box worth more than 80 euros. Yeah. So, crayons and fruit. I'm not all that mad about that. <laughs> I'm actually not that mad about it. I don't know, I, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I'm apprehensive about the supplies because I just, I really don't like stuff like this. The fact that we've got a simple subject matter for the challenge, uh, that makes it, makes me feel a bit better and makes me feel like I just want to go for it. Like, because, I mean, these oil pastels, it's a quick medium. You're not waiting for stuff to dry. You just go in there and batter everything down. So uh, I think we might just do that. We might just do our wee uh, upcrate battle right now, or at least we'll, we'll at least have a practice run. What do you think, guys? I feel kind of like I feel as if you're being cheated the last few videos because I haven't done any artwork, but I've I've been quite pushed for time. And as I say, I've just honestly I've just not been feeling the love. First, I want to see if this pen is going to leak through. Um, if it's going to bleed through onto the other side, you're not going to get really sort of like 
crisp lines. You are from this distance away, um, but because of this linen texture, you're going to have a very slight bleed with this pen, but I think it's minimal, it's not going to be noticeable. Um, and it's covering the texture of the paper okay, you know, like, so I can actually colour in a little bit um, and I'm not leaving behind little white specks there. Oh, look at that as well. It's not soaking through. Again, I think there'll be some sort of coating on this because it is obviously meant for oils and things. So that's really good as well. I, I actually quite like this pen. Yep. Okay, I'm really happy with that. It's quite a nice deep black as well. I find with a lot of these pens you end up like with a grey or like a more of a... Um, like a brown colour sometimes, like a, like a greenish tone to it, but this isn't too bad at all. It is a little bit whiffy, as long as you don't get too close, I think you'll be a-okay though, so there's that. Uh, I've got these little Conti crayons as well, let's have a wee bash with these. It feels horrible on that paper. Oh. Um, the fact that we've got these blocks though, like we, you know, we've got a couple of different edges that we can do things with. Uh, they're, they're quite chalky, look. This is supposed to be a wax. Oh, they are, mm, it's coming off on my fingers, but it's not, I, it's almost as if it's powdery, but it's not powdery, that's so weird. I'm going to try some smudging, but I'm going to do that with like one of the darker colours, because it's easier for you guys to see on the camera. So they're a wee bit crumbly, but they did say they're, you know, obviously they're a lot drier than the likes of oil pastels, so you are going to get that. Oh yeah, I can smudge out, look. That's lovely, that's shown up the texture of that paper beautifully as well. If I zoom in, you can see that little crisscross pattern. Yeah! So that's nice. We, we can actually blend out those harder crayons as well. Boo -boo. Which would be nice for a background, see, especially with the texture of this paper. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of into this. Okay, I'm, I'm warming to this idea. I'm warming to the box. This is great for detail if you don't want to use the... Um, the, the fine line, well the fine line, it's not a fine line, it's quite a thick liner actually, but if you don't want to use the pen, you'll be able to get fine lines and details in with this. And I'd hopefully over the top of these, I'm not sure, again we'll need to test that out. Uh, you know, we need to do a, a sort of round robin of what goes on top of what, what works and what doesn't. And that's what we're here for, we're here to investigate that today. Okay, um, so these colours are quite vibrant, they're quite nice, and uh, that's definitely, like, in my mind, I'm like, yep, detail, that's what they're for. So I'm just going to show you the colours here. Once we get a bit further down again, I'll show you their sort of smudgy properties as well. But I just want to get some swatches out here so that I can see the colour range. Uh, we've got two greens here, we've got this more sort of, like, vibrant, closer, I would say, maybe to, like, what, an emerald green? I wonder what colour they're calling it. Thalo green. Papa Gem's here, he's just walked in the door, can you tell? Woof woof woof, that's Pip. Permanent green medium. Apologies, I was called away there for a, an animal emergency and uh, for my troubles I'm now covered in antibiotic spray. Uh, this stuff just does not come off so I apologise for my now blue fingers but kinda, I kinda needed to do it. Um, yeah, so I'm quite excited about these actually. Look at this blue, this is nice. <laughs> Matches my hand. <laughs> so we're getting nice vibrant colour, we're getting pretty good lay down as well. If you're not a fan of the paper, you know, like, I understand. You can use other papers, though. Isn't that right? Is that, like, a vermilion colour? Yeah. Oh, look at that as well. I like that colour. That's nice. These are really smooth, though. Like, I, I'm enjoying the smoothness. That's the deep yellow. We've got a lemon yellow. Oh. Now, this is very similar to our um, lemon yellow, you know, our, our little crayon. And we've got white as well, which is quite nice. The first thing I want to see is how how these are going to interact and behave on top of each other. That was the hand I had the spray can in. How did that happen? Like this one got it. This was the hand that was holding the animal. So obviously it makes sense that I'm going to have spray in that hand because I was scushing with this hand. But God almighty. <sighs> Anywho, to start us off, I want to try on top of the permanent marker. So you can see that's the um the, the little crayons here, the Conte crayons. And let's take the white pastel. Yeah. So that's going down over the top of that. Absolutely no bother. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. So let's try now on top of the wax crayon, the Conte crayon. I feel like I'm going to say the word crayon a lot in this video. And yeah, that's actually, okay, that's going down on top of that. I'm trying to do it on a thicker piece. But yeah, that's taking that really well. I wasn't expecting that. So we can actually draw on top of that. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to, oh, okay. 
we can put the pastels on top but it's picking up the colour underneath if I just show you the corner of that um, of that wax pastel there, can you see the little bit of pink on it? yeah that's that's going down over the top okay so maybe the white was just a bad example um, I'm assuming we'll still be able to smudge that in as well yeah and obviously that's mixing with the red and the white oh interesting Oh, it's going to be one of those days today, isn't it? Um, there was a knock at the door there and it was the postie. Uh, someone has sent me happy birthday truffles and there's no note or anything with it. So if it's any of you guys, um, thank you very much. But I'd, I, like, I don't know who it is that sent me these. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Right, okay, where were we? Yes, layering, right, okay. So, uh, yeah, we know that everything works on top of the wax crayons. I'm assuming we can put crayon on top of crayon. Yep, we can. Okay, that's fine. Um, so now we need to talk about the pastels. The pastels do layer up, I do know that. Um, I think you just have to be quite light-handed if you don't want the colours to mix too much. Um, that was very, very light tickling. Whereas if I press a bit harder, oh no, okay, um, I think maybe if we want to mix them together we have to kind of like smudgy smudgy, yeah, because look that's starting to make like a greenish tone which is what we would expect. So I think we might struggle with the permanent marker on the thick oil pastel, yeah that's kind of mucky and it's picking up the, the oil on the tip of it so I think you would get away if you've, um, if you've blended it out like this. Yep, you can do a wee bit of work with that, but you might have to kind of like clean the nib off a wee bit to get any oily residue off of it. But overall, I mean, these supplies actually work really well together. The fact that we've got the black pen as well, you know, that 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 uh, that makes me really happy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this. I don't know, I think we'll do a wee practice run for, for the upgrade battle. I don't think whatever I do in this video I'll post as my final piece for the, um, you know, on Instagram. But I think it would be good to have a wee practice. <laughs> I'm chuckling away to myself here. I'm just looking for a couple of uh, reference photos of bananas. And uh, I'm on one of these sites where um, the, they're royalty free. The images are royalty free so you're, you can use them for stuff like that. And someone's posted up a picture of a bunch of bananas and they've put googly eyes on all the, the bananas and noses. Um, it's quite entertaining. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a bunch of bananas. I'm not very good at stuff like this, honestly. Like, this isn't really my wheelhouse. I suppose we want basic shapes. One of the things I'm kind of conflicted with, uh, you know, in myself at the moment is that... When I am drawing in graphite, which is one of my favourite things to do, I, I always do like very precise sketches and stuff. When I'm painting, which I'm doing more of these days, I do not like to sketch at all. I like to go straight in with the paint. So it's caused this kind of like conflict in myself. So when it comes to supplies that I really don't use, like wax pastels, I, I actually don't have a clue what I'm doing um, and whether I should be sketching an outline or, you know, like I really, really don't know what I'm doing. So let's just try and make some basic shapes and I'll figure it out from there. So if we look at the colour wheel real quick, um, the opposite of yellow, the complementary colour is purple. We don't have a purple, um, but we do have blues. I might try and sort of mix like a, like a bluey, pinky background. I'm sure if I added more, you know, if I really loaded the paper up, then I would get quite a rich background. But it's giving me, um, well, it's kind of giving me, yeah, not my strong suit. I think I've gone too heavy with the strokes here. Oh, that felt nice. That was a lot of pastel, though. You know, there was a lot of what, a lot of the actual pastel down there. Yeah, th this little crayon's great for this. Oh, I'm kind of liking this. That's one banana. I think I've got one heed as well. I think that I'd already kind of made my mind up about that. And there's one tucked in behind. I don't know what's happening down here now though. Got like an extra bit. That's okay, we'll fix it. Now I see all these people with their, their lovely, you know, oil pastel artworks and there's all these expressive strokes 
and you know it looks really artistic and really cool and that's not going to be happening here for the simple fact that I'm, I'm mainly working coloured pencil and when I am working in paint I like to use teeny tiny brushes and I like to be very precise um, so this might actually be a really good exercise in Gem Gem Loosen Up <laughs> You know, I want to use in the colours. I do want to be using the colours. So, yep. So this is like the underneath banana. See, there, this one's way in behind. Way in behind. So I think I'll maybe use a darker colour there. I'm thinking as well that for a shadow colour, I think I will use the complementary colour. I might just use blue. Um, blue is kind of a colour I would naturally gravitate towards for a shadow colour anyway. See, I don't want this mixing in and making green bananas, which is exactly what it's doing. Um, so we may have to stick to the brown. Oh. Not going to lie, quite enjoyed myself here. Ooh. Like, bananas don't have to be yellow. Okay, my little crayon's not doing much, but... Oh, yeah, it is. Hey. There we go. Uh, now, where have I got an eraser that I don't use very often? I was also chuckling away to myself about the comments under the last video about drinking your paint water. Um, that that really made me chuckle. Oh, it's doing something. Oh, I think I'm making it worse. <laughs> I think I'm making, I'm making it worse. It's brown. Oh, damn. Right, okay. I think we're going to have to just try and go over the top of this and hide it. <laughs> like, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Just pretend it's not there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am... Um, for me, I, I've never had a problem with the paint water thing, like that's never been a thing for me. But uh, the configuration of my desks here are in a U shape this way. And we are sitting at this desk up here right now. So if I have something to drink, I put it on the desk behind me. So I have to turn around to go and get something to drink. But it stops me doing anything crazy like that. It also stops me knocking over. Which when you've got a bit of a dodgy hand. Um, you know, that's something I'm kind of hyper aware of anyway. I've got enough problems without adding a drink into the mix. So that's how I do it. Um, and I have, But I've never, I've never ever, even before I started doing that. Like before I had this desk configuration. Um, I, and I never drank my paint water. I can't think of anything more revolting. <laughs> Someone said they did it and it was only very slightly used paint water though and I was like, even at that I was like, oh no. And somebody had like a tiny, like they dipped their paintbrush in their coffee. I was like, oh god. It's funny. It did make me laugh though. This is, it's a bit of a messy occupation, this oil pastel stuff. Well, I suppose pastels are anyway aren't they like i'm having fun i can say that for sure like definitely having fun the the interesting thing about this as a medium though is you can you can get stuff down really quickly like it's a really quick medium to work in for me it's always you know methodical slow because it's either pencil or you know whatever that's very enjoyable like this is a very enjoyable part of it i'm liking it a lot Mm, I don't think I've got enough yellow. There needs to be some yellow here. Just a wee bit though. Oh yeah, maybe this is a really unripe banana. Maybe that was the one that was furthest away from the sun. Maybe it was in the shade when it was on the vine. Do they call it a vine? Just sort of differentiate between my bananas a wee bit. Well then, all that's left to do is sign it. <laughs> and I've got a pen to do that as well, which is just awesome. Makes me really happy. Okay, well, uh, that is indeed our uh, upgrade number 54. That is the February upgrade. Uh, what do you guys think of this box? I have actually just sat here and created something and I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. So although it's maybe not something I would use on a regular basis, this is why it's really important um, if you've not tried something like this to go ahead and try it because uh, you just never know what might pop out of these things. Um, I don't think I'm going to win any awards for my still life in oil pastel efforts. <laughs> let's face it, you know, let's have a little bit of shadow around here as well, I think. Maybe make a mixture of blue and black here. Uh, I've just had a really good time and uh, it's nice to be working in, you know, like a bit of a looser style. 
uh, because as I say, you know, I'm, I'm pretty regimented a lot of the time and I like things to be very precise. And I think we can, one thing we can all agree on here is that there is nothing precise about this. Uh, the oil pastels, these are really nice. Um, I'm going to put these in the stash shop because the chances of me actually needing these again are very slim. So like 10 out of 10, well done Upcrate, would highly recommend just for a, like a little bit of a different experience. I know we had oil pastels not that long ago, but I didn't use them. I think it must have been over Christmas when I just wasn't engaging and stuff. Um, but So I'm really glad to have had a, a shot of these. Uh, so yeah, they'll probably go into the stash shop next week, I would imagine. So you can, uh, you can go and check those out if you want something to be bargain. Um, obviously, I will put them up really cheap because technically now they are used. I, I'm not mad about this. <laughs> I am not mad about this drawing. So... Please go down into the comments, let me know your thoughts on this box uh, and also on the prompt what you think of that as well. I think, oh we never used the, we never used the stick. That is it for today guys, I want to thank you very much for watching, thanks for coming and hanging out, you know that I always really appreciate your views. Uh, please feel free to join in the conversation down in the comments, I would love to hear your thoughts. And I will see you back in the cave really soon for, for a slightly different video, um, you can keep your eyes peeled for that in the next week or so, so have a great day everyone and bye bye for now.